Now, the bottom on here is cycle brackets. They're just a drawing tool. And what we're comparing in here are the energetic or money flow movements of the FEZ to the UK. So we're looking at a weekly chart here in the UK. And when you have these upward cycles, in other words, they configure in a way that the highs are lower and the lows are, I'm sorry, the highs are higher and the lows are higher. Those are what we call bullish configurations. And in this case, you know, the market was moving up very strongly. And that's uh, over in 2020, 2021. You'll note in here that what happened was it made a new high, which was expected. But then this break in here made a lower low. And that gives you this negative configuration right here. <clears throat> Then what happened was there was a significant break in the market. So the uh, I'm just going to grab a, a line in here. This is where that cycle low was. And when it goes underneath that cycle low, it proves to you that it's configuring negative again. And then there's a lot of time left. So you can see in here there was a minor cycle and a dominant cycle. And when they get into these final stages is when you get the biggest selling. You could see that here and here and here. And that's coming right in here. This was a sell zone that was set up based on the the um, magnitude of decline in here. And you could see it just got perfectly into the sell zone and then turned down again. So you have a, a very weak condition in here. And the likelihood that the European market is going to break below this low. I'm sorry, the the the, the uh, UK market get below here at 2788, maybe get down to this area at 2680, uh, which are fib extensions down there. This says that the market is going to be weak into October, potentially into November between these two lines right over here. So this is an example of a European market that is in a lot of trouble. And based on our analysis, the odds of going down are much higher than the odds of going up. Let's take a look here uh, as we switch over and look at FXI, which is the Chinese market. And you can see in here a very similar condition. Now, these yellow ovals that we're looking at are uh, periods of, of risk. That is where these cycles are in their final stages. And you can see you get these sell-offs in each one of them. And now we're coming right into here. This is into October and November. The likelihood is high of getting under this level 2613, uh, potentially getting down here to 2440, which is uh, where we have that projected right now. And again, October, November, there is a lot of weakness projected in there. So you could see these world markets that are significant. Uh, they are really in a very, very bad shape. And it is likely that those are going to lead the U.S. markets to the downside. Now, one comment I made before was how important the financials are to the U.S. market. And I want to switch over here and look at XLF. Now, again, what we're looking at are these configurations in here. You had a very bullish condition that was driving this up in this bullish con uh, configuration. It said that the next cycle should make a new high, and it did. You can see that. And it said the next cycle should make a new high, and it did. You can see that. But then look here. It broke that, and it had all of this time to fall. Just absolutely mind-boggling how perfect that was. Then when the market rally, you would expect it to rally into the resistance and fail, and that's what's going on right now. While there may be a little bit of room in here to continue to try to bounce up, it really looks like there's a lot of risk in here. And this cycle trough goes out to March of 23. There's actually a minor cycle right in there that goes out into October, November, which really aligns with what we're looking at in these other markets. So you could get a breakdown in here into October, November, another attempted rally, and then a decline out into March of 23. And we've talked about the likelihood that this bear market goes out into 2023. And when you look at the XLF, that aligns with that. Now, one more thing I want to show you in the XLF, and that's this chart right over here. The top is the XLF chart looking at a daily chart, and the bottom is the relative strength of XLF uh, and that's compared to the S&P 500. Now, when the market's going up, it's usually led by good relative strength in the XLF, and that drives the market up because the financials look good. But now we're in a period of inverted yield curve, which is likely to get worse, 
and you can see in here as the uh, relative strength of the financials continues to be in this significant downtrend and that says to me that the financials are going to lead the stock market to the downside more and so that very very key group uh, which often uh, is gives you a, a good tell on the condition of the market is now in a period of extended negative relative strength and the, that which makes that happen which are yield curves that where the, the they have to borrow short at higher prices and lend long at lower lower prices that puts them in a condition of very difficult to make money so the financials are in trouble and that really says the stock market is in trouble so now let's leave the XLF and go to the S&P 500, SPX. And we'll see in here that what we have looked at was the probability that there would be a failure in these resistance areas right over here, even though it rallied over 17% and then have a decline. Now, because of the length and magnitude of this rally, we have an alternative in here where it may only pull back down to just under 4,000. This support down over here is about 3,900, and it looks to me like uh, that might be the area where it stalls, and then you get another rally in here, and then that you know big decline that we're looking at out to March, April. Uh, so the bear market would just simply just continue. Uh, in that case, you'd probably get another rally over here that would hook the bulls again, and then move down again. This is the scenario that we looked at that was said that there would be a likely resumption to the downside so again that resumption looks like it will decline out into late september to sometime in october uh, and uh, it could simply be just another 120 points to the downside in s p it seems like that's not very much i think it would be more than that uh, as you uh, look at the potentials for some of these lower prices. So uh, best case I'm going to make is around 3980, maybe 3900. And then you can see that red line coming down right over there. That was the original very negative projection taking out this low. I'm not sure about that anymore, but I am very positive about this risky area that we're in right now. This yellow zone you can see in here, period of risk period of risk September October taking it down over here so uh, we'll just have to see the magnitude of that decline and it can be very sharp I want to show you the short-term analysis we shared with our membership this week and that is that the signs were that because this low was taken out in the Nasdaq and just tested here in the S&P 500 that it would rally up into the minor resistances and then sell off well, that was spot on. It was perfect where you got this. And the short-term analysis now points to another maybe five, six days on the downside. Here's that area right there, that support of around 3980. I wouldn't be surprised if it got there. Probably another attempt of a bounce in here. And then this is a big period of risk where they could really throw them away. And uh, you've got to be real careful in this period in here of September uh, mid-September to late September, early October, there is a lot of risk during that time period. So that's a look at the daily. This is a look at the weekly, all in periods of risk right now. And uh, as I said, the uh, world markets, as I showed you in the EU and the FXI, um, they're in very bad shape. The XLF showing uh, a negative uh, influence on our market uh, overall and these conditions are bad and the likelihood of a rally that holds is quite small the likelihood of large sell-offs like you see here today with right now as I'm speaking the S&P 500 down over 90 points well, I think there's more of that ahead that is our view of the stock market one to three month view plus a little short-term peak at the S&P 500